Hello, everybody. I just love this. <laughs> She's such a beautiful judge. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Detective. I was muted and I just went through the whole rigmarole. All right, this is the people <laughs> versus that. this. No, it's okay. It's my fault. The people of the state of Michigan versus Brian Abrams. Detective, can you raise your right hand? Do you soundly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, Your Honor. Can you state your name for the record? Detective Corporal Mark Johnson. And have you read the type complaint that's filed with the court? Yes, Your Honor. Are the facts stated in the complaint true to the best of your knowledge and belief? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Can you state the facts that support the issuance of the arrest warrant? Yes, on October 2nd, 2024, approximately 7.40 p.m., Taylor officers were dispatched to 14669 Bailey for a male pointing a handgun at a female. Upon arriving, officers located the victim, Bridget Bradley, in her vehicle parked on the road, one house south of 14669 Bailey. Uh, officers spoke to her, uh, and she stated she had just gotten out of work. Um, she arrived at the residence and saw Abram sitting on the porch. When she approached Abrams, uh, she could smell alcohol in his breath. Abrams immediately began to accuse her of cheating on him and began to act irate. She entered the residence to gather uh, some of her property so she could leave and separate herself from Abrams. Abrams followed her into the residence and continued to be irate and argue with her. The argument escalated and they began pushing each other in the kitchen. Abrams grabbed onto her shirt, so she pushed him away and he fell onto his back. While on the ground... Abrams produced a black handgun from his shorts and pointed it at her. She has been in a dating relationship with Abrams for three years, and they have been living at the residence together for one year. Uh, after uh, placing Mr. Abrams in custody, officers were given permission to search the residence and did locate a uh, handgun uh, wedged between the couch cushions in the residence. Okay. And did you uh, sign the complaint before you sent it over to the court? Yes, Your Honor. Let the record indicate that I find probable cause to believe the accused committed the alleged offense, and I'll therefore issue the warrant. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a uh, this is an in custody. Um, I will uh, let you know that uh, I did speak to the victim, who said she has uh, packed up most of her things and she is leaving. Um, she said that the Bailey address is Mr. Abrams' house. Um, and has she, she left yet? When did she tell you that? Like, is leaving or has left? She told me this morning that she's left. And that okay. uh, my understanding is that she's going to a shelter of some sort. Um, okay. But but as far as I know, she is no longer at the residence uh, where the incident took place. Okay. All right. Do you have any other position on bond? Let's uh, see an offense since in 24 years uh no, no just, i'll leave it to the court's discretion your honor okay okay thank you officer we'll get him arraigned today thank you your honor have a good afternoon all right thanks all right this is 220138, the people versus Anthony Terry. We have Jeffrey Tampa on behalf of Mr. Terry, wait for more reading stand mute. We're custody hearing judge. There's uh, information that's gathered at time of testing, including photographs and whatnot. We don't talk to Ms. Hamner. She's not sure how they store that. And I would uh, um, what for the sober link? Yes. Yeah, there's a camera and they do take a picture like her image blowing into it. Uh huh. Um, I guess Mr. Gary was saying that he did not miss any tests. So Mr. Panto wants the images of those tests on the report. Rather that, than that's something you can get. I mean, I've seen it on the interlock. I assume if we get it on the silver link, too. I'd have to call and find out. I'm it's the so. first time I've asked on silver link. So yeah. But, um, yeah, and that's we just um, and I, I like it for the entire trip, um, uh, and 
so that would reflect you know both the tests that he took um, and the, the the alleged test time periods that he missed. I believe he had it from the 7th to the 21st at CAT 2. I can see if we can get all the images for all those things. How often does he test him? Uh, he is on um, Greg's up to three times a month for drug testing and TN for PPT, which is up to one time a week. Uh, since he, he has not had any alcohol positives while on probation, that's why he is on lower colors. Um, but he didn't have a bunch of missed tests on the silver Lincoln. One positive test that um, you know can't be concluded as a actual positive or not because we missed the five tests that were alerted afterwards. All right, better not guilty plea up his behalf, Mr. Terry. You are on such an ice with me. It's you know. Here's the thing, you have a right to a hearing. Your attorney, Mr. Fanto's a very good attorney. If he wants to look at that, he has a right to see that. So we'll set it for a hearing date. I'm gonna give you a personal bond in the interim. But Mr. Terry, your behavior, like you don't know how to act like a grown up. It's alarming to me that someone your age doesn't know, have like you seem to have no impulse control. So you go to DPW, they literally send you home and tell us don't ever send this guy back. We don't want him because you're disruptive. So then, did he go to the garden like he was supposed to? Yes, he did. Okay. So did Donna have any complaints? No, he did three days at the garden so far and Donna did say he was a good work. Okay, well, that's good. And then you go into probation today on this violation. And my understanding is you're down there cussing at your probation officer. I mean, I don't know what world you live in, but you're on probation. Ms. Havner has a job to do, and her job is not to put up with your trash. I'm serious. You're not going to talk to her like that, and you're not going to behave that way in the building. And I've already seen that you have difficulty controlling yourself by whatever the issue was over at your community service. If you ever I want to be clear, Ms. Havner, if he comes in and behaves that way in this building again, cussing at you, uh, you can make it a condition of his probation that he has to behave like a grown up in the building. If you act like that again, I'm throwing you in jail for the whole time without even blinking. You're not going to come in here and talk to my staff like that. Yes, Ms. Havner has a job and her job, I don't know why someone on probation would think they can come in and cuss her out or behave like that. Just How sure. old are you? 26. 26. So the courts are where I, Mr. Uh, and, and I have a conversation. It will not be tolerated. The people in this building work very hard. Ms. Havner went to college to be a probation officer, and she does a great job. And I'm not going to have anybody on probation come in this building and behave like they're at their house. You're not punching walls here. You're not cussing people out. Pull it together. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Why are you telling me sorry? Turn around. I, I no, apologize. turn around and tell Ms. Havner sorry. I'm sorry for the way I acted this morning. Thank you. You have a thousand dollar personal bond on the violation while it's pending. But Mr. Terry, I've been incredibly patient with you because you haven't had use violations. But I will not tolerate that. Yes, ma'am. Do you want this adjourned to next week? Put it on the, these are mine. Okay. Um, Ms. Havner, you, I don't know how long it's going to take you to get that information, Mr. Fanto. Okay. So if, if it has to go on next week or the week after, I'm okay with that. Okay. I will tell you this, Mr. Terry, if I was you, I wouldn't miss a test between now and the next time I see you and whatever other conditions of bond or probation that you have. If you're missing things, I'd get them done yes, or I'd work on them or you'll go to the Wayne County Jail. Yes, ma'am. All right. No, if we get it, if we adjourn it to the 10th or the 17th, that's what that is. Okay, I, well, that's fine, but I'm not sure we're... We can adjourn everything until the next uh, court hearing and you can just continue with the conditions um, because his end date is not to the 18th. 
So as long as the hearing is held at 10 to the 17th, it's good. Okay. Um, we're just discussing, he's got an end date and we need to extend his probation depending on the timing. He's got some things to finish up and that's, we're, we're okay with that. Um, we're just trying to figure out the timing of actually saying, okay, we're going to extend for a period of time. So we'll, we'll figure that out if we need to address it, we can. Okay, yeah. I mean, we can do the 10th or the 17th, I think. No, the 17th is a, not a VOP docket because the... I think there's that's two what we got. That's a weird week. What's that? Then there's two violations that can be put on that day. I'm not sure if any have been scheduled yet. Okay. Just, you you know what you're doing. The two of you will work we'll it out that. and just make sure that Mr. Terry knows when he needs to be back. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Thank you, Judge. All right. Be good. Yes, ma'am. Act Thank like you. an adult. Um, all right. This is a citation that was issued on August 31st of this year on M40 near Valley Township. It's a speeding citation on an actual 75 and a 55. However, it was only written as a one to five over. Miss Rock, you are here on this one to five over speeding citation to do one of three things. First is you could admit responsibility to the citation or two, admit responsibility, but you'd like to provide some sort of explanation as to how or why this happened. Or three, you wish to contest this citation. In other words, fight the ticket at what we call informal hearing. What were you looking to do? I'm contesting. I'm contesting. All right. Uh, and then I would go ahead and ask you and Trooper to go ahead and raise your right hands. Swear or affirm. Any testimony you give here today would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. 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 And so, Ms. Rock, it makes a lot more sense for me to start with the uh, trooper. He has the burden to establish to me why you were issued a citation in the first place. But then after that, you'll be able to either ask questions or testify in your own behalf. Mm -hmm. And with that, trooper, you want to pick up the narrative somewhere where it makes sense, explain the issuing of this citation. Okay. Okay. On uh, August 31st, and I might have to turn my speaker down a little. Here we go. August 31st of this year, I was on duty in a fully marked patrol car in uniform. Uh, I was using a radar that's been approved for the use in the state of Michigan. And it's a radar that I'm trained to use. And it passed all its tests at the beginning and the end of my shift. I was on patrol at approximately 7.37 a.m. on M40 going northwest bound um, just prior to Allegan Dam Road. Um, ahead of me, the co the road comes up to a hill and then dips back down. To, so there was a crest, maybe a quarter mile at the most. Uh, in the opposite direction, I saw the target vehicle come over that crest, um, appeared to be exceeding the posted speed limit of 55, activated my radar, uh, obtained a very brief tracking history of 75 miles an hour. It was the only target vehicle. It was the only visible vehicle in sight in front of me. Uh, there were no obstructions between my radar antenna and the target vehicle. Uh, the patrol speed on the radar matched the patrol speed on my speedometer and the tone, the audio tone from the radar was consistent with the vehicle um, traveling 70 miles an hour plus. Um, affected a traffic stop for that speeding violation, identified the driver as Ms. Lauren Rock. Um, no admissions or comments from her about the speed. Uh, subsequently issued her a five over speeding citation, 60 and a 55. Okay, Ms. Rock, what is it you wish to tell me? Um, so on that day that the um, speeding citation was issued, um, I was a very alert driver. I had two hands on the wheel. Um, my phone was, I have a magnet Thing that's on my dash and so my phone was up there it was playing an audiobook my eyes were on the road and I was adhering and paying attention to all of the um, speed limit signs that were um, on every road that I went down um, I was heading to my sister's house and we have business together I was not in a rush I was um, on time and I was driving on that road and um, I do not believe that it was um violating any speed limits okay that's a lot of information 
Uh, how fast do you think you were going? Um, between 53 and 55. Okay. I, in listening to this evidence, I doubt that a lot. All right. Uh, it's not like you're being accused of going, you only have a ticket for one to five over, but let me just reiterate what the trooper has said, right? The trooper said he visually saw your vehicle and he thinks it's going faster than 55. Now, we don't let him guess your speed because he's a human being and human beings could make mistakes, but road patrol officers are probably pretty good at assessing speed, right? So he knows that, hey, this car is moving faster than the speed limit. So then what he does is use his radar, right? It tones out. Well, I'll get to that later, but it gets you at 75 and a 55. So a lot different than what you're saying, right? You agree. You're saying you're going 53 to 55. The radar saying you're going 75. That's not even close, right? So how do we determine, you know, what that, that, that speed, that 75 is accurate? Well, first of all, that radar, like the trooper said, and I'm going to sort of really sort of drag this out. He tests that at the beginning and end of his shift. What he means by that, uh, I'll just put a little more meat on the bone for you, is he has a separately calibrated speedometer in his patrol car, right? So that is separately calibrated to be an accurate speedometer. When he runs his check at the beginning of his shift with that radar, it has to match his separately calibrated speedometer. That's how it does a self-check to know that it's in working order that day. And then he might write tickets all day, but he also has to self-check that radar at the end of his shift, like he said he did, that it was also accurately working that day, right? So we have a human being who says, I do this for a living and I think this car is moving a lot faster than 55. Then we have a radar that's in proper working order that has you at 75 miles an hour. That radar is tested against a separately calibrated speedometer and was found to be in working order before and after his shift. And it also toned out. In other words, it makes a noise. And he knows what that noise is supposed to sound like if he's getting a number above 70, like 75, that tone has to match. And he testified that it did. So that's all the evidence that you're going 75. Your hitter telling me you're going 53 to 55. That's your testimony under oath, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have to decide what to do about that. Not only do I find that you were speeding, but the, the trooper didn't write you a ticket for going 20 miles over. He wrote you a ticket for going one to five over, right? He wrote you the wimpiest speeding ticket he can. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're coming in here and saying a lot of information, very clear, very articulate. You're not in a hurry. You're at 10 and two. You're listening to an audio book. You're paying attention to all the speed limits. And you know how fast you were going. You were going two miles less than the speed limit, right? And so I have to decide which one of you I think is more correct. I'm, I'm about this close to letting him amend that speeding ticket up from one to five. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I find you responsible on the ticket as it's written because you had a contested hearing. You have a right to appeal this decision for formal hearing to do that. You must ask for that within seven days of today's date. And you must come in and do that personally because you would need to post the bond in the same amount as the fine. We're all set here. I'm going to release you. Thank you. Be safe, be well, sleep sweet, and much love.